show that the given vectors form an orthogonal basis for R3. Then express vector W as a linear combination of these basis vectors. Give the coordinate vector of vector W with respect to the basis of R3. So the first thing that we need to do is show that the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3 form an orthogonal basis for R3. So recalling the definition of an orthogonal basis, we know that an orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis of W that is an orthogonal set. So in order to verify this definition, we need to first show that the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3 are orthogonal. Now, in order to do this, we need to take the dot product of all pairs of distinct vectors and show that their dot product is equal to zero. So we have three cases. Case one, we are taking the dot product of vector v sub one with vector v sub two. So we have the vector v sub one, one, zero, negative one. And we are dotting this with vector v sub two, which has components three, six, three. In computing our dot product, we have three plus zero minus three, which equals zero. Case two, we are taking the dot product of vector v sub one with vector v sub three. So vector v sub one has the components one, zero, negative one. And we are dotting this with the vector three, negative three, positive three. And computing this dot product, we have three plus zero minus three, which equals zero. And last but not least, taking the dot product of vector v sub 2 with vector v sub 3. v sub 2 has the components 3, 6, 3. And we are dotting this with vector v sub 3 with the components 3, negative 3, 3. So computing this dot product, we have 9 minus 18 plus 9, which equals 0. Woohoo! So we can now conclude or make the conclusion that since all pairs of distinct vectors are orthogonal, as demonstrated by the dot products above, we know that this also implies that these vectors, vector v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector v sub 3, are also linearly independent. Now, since this set of vectors are orthogonal and linearly independent, we can also conclude that this set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, and v sub 3 form an orthogonal set. Beautiful. So we have a orthogonal set of three linearly independent vectors. So we can further conclude that by the fundamental theorem of ma invertible matrices, that since any three linearly independent vectors in R3 form a basis for R3, then the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3 form an orthogonal basis. Beautiful. So the next thing that we want to do is write vector w as a linear combination of these basis vectors. Now we can recall that the last theorem gave us a really nice formula to compute the coordinates of a vector w with respect to an orthogonal basis, defined as c sub i is equal to the dot product of vector w with vector v sub i by vector v sub i dotted with itself. Now this formula in turn is going to allow us to write vector w as a linear combination of the basis vectors and will also allow us to define the coordinates of the basis vector relative to our orthogonal basis. So here we go. We have three cases to consider. Case one, the unique scalar c sub one is defined as vector w dotted with vector v sub one all over the dot product of vector v sub one with itself. So vector w is defined by the components one, 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 and we are dotting this with vector v sub one, which has components one, zero, negative one. And this is all divided by the dot product of vector one, zero, negative one, dotted with itself. 
So computing this dot product in the numerator, we have 1 plus 0 minus 1. In the denominator, we have 1 plus 0 plus 1, which leaves us with 0 by 2, which is 0. So there's our first unique scalar. Scalar c sub 2 is defined as vector w dotted with vector v sub 2, all divided by the dot product of vector v sub 2 with itself. So in the numerator, we have the dot product of the vector 1, 1, 1, and we're dotting this with the vector 3, 6, 3. And in our denominator, we have the dot product of the vector 3, 6, 3 with itself. So computing these dot products in the numerator, we have 3 plus 6 plus 3. And in the denominator, we have 9 plus 36 plus 9, which simplifies to 12 by 54. And we can simplify that a little further to 2 ninths. And last but not least, we have our unique scalar, c sub 3. So c sub 3 is defined as the dot product of vector w with vector v sub 3, all divided by the dot product of vector v sub 3 with itself. So we have the vector 1, 1, 1 dotted with the vector 3 minus 3, 3. And in that denominator, we have the dot product of the vector 3, negative 3, 3 with itself. That is a tired 3. So here we go, computing this dot product. In the numerator, we have 3 minus 3 plus 3. In the denominator, we have 9 plus 9 plus 9, which simplifies to 3 by 27, which we can, of course, reduce to 1 ninth. So we have everything that we need, and we can write vector w as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So we have c sub 1 times vector v sub 1 plus c sub 2 times vector v sub 2 plus c sub 3 times vector v sub 3, which is equal to 0 times vector v sub 1 plus 2 ninths times vector v sub 2 plus 1 ninth times vector v sub 3. So this is the linear combination for vector w. And then we can also take this one step further and write the coordinate vector of w with respect to the basis vectors. So the components of this vector are these unique scalars, c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 3. So we are left with the vector with components 0, 2 ninths, 1 ninth. And this is our beautiful final answer.